Hello and welcome back. Today we're doing something a little bit different. I had intended to work on the recoil and the camera shake and things like that, but I ended up just having something come up and I ended up really not wanting to work on that and I just ended up making clouds over the weekend. So I figured I'd go ahead and show that off here. I had several of my friends and members of the community ask me to publish it here so that that way people could use it. It's been up on my GitHub for a couple days now if anyone's noticed, but this is kind of the official introduction. Now before I get started, I do want to explicitly state this is an experimental project. This should probably not be used in a final release of a game just yet. There's a lot of issues specifically around the AMD GPU set, but also various issues having to do with pixel errors and things like that that you occasionally get. I've not really nailed down what it is and we're still hunting it. So if anyone has any experience and specifically anyone who has any experience with shaders, ray marching and is using an AMD GPU, I'd love to hear about you trying it out, testing it, seeing if maybe you can hunt down some of the issues with it. That'd be a lot of help to us. Now that all being said, let's go ahead and jump in and I'll kind of walk through the code a little bit and then I'll walk through some of the settings and show off how they work. So if we go down here to the shader, first off with the vertex, we go ahead and just set it to the screen space. Now in order to do this, we do have to go ahead and set the skip vertex transform to enabled. We are running it unshaded and cold disabled because I realized that the wrong side of the face was pointed towards the camera. It doesn't really matter. Now down here, now down here, we've got our sample cloud map. We'll get back to that as well as an ease out quadratic and we get to our fragment. Now for our fragment, we go ahead and get our depth and linear space. So that's like the actual distance from the camera and world units. Then we also get our camera and our world position and we get a direction based off the camera towards the world position. Then we're going to use the view direction and that's just going to get our actual ray marching direction, which we're just going to normalize. Now we do have a dither here and this is handled through a dither matrix. It's just a four by four vector array with just some random numbers in here. And you just iterate through it using the frag coordinates to move around the dither super, super fast. If we set the speed down to zero, you can kind of see that pattern begin to emerge. Now this combined with using t temporal anti-aliasing does result in an extremely smooth result. Now mind you, if you turn off temporal anti-aliasing, you are going to get a little bit of noise in there, but it's better than the banding that we were seeing before. Now, besides that, we go ahead and go into our for loop as well as the for loop for shadows. Now the for loop for shadows is based off of wherever the array ended up at, not at each step of the array. Now, the reason why I did that was twofold. One, it was creating a lot of performance issues and the quality of the shadows was very low by sampling the shadows at each step of the ray cast. And then also by putting a for loop inside of another for loop, it was really contributing to a lot of those pixel errors that I was seeing before. As of right now, nothing's too broken on it. And if you set up the quality to a higher quality setting, even even without temporal anti-aliasing, it still looks quite good. Now down here below the shadow, we go ahead and get our current density and we use that for our alpha and then we just get the color based off of the sample color map. So the sample color map just takes a position in world space and a time and it goes ahead and takes the height scale, which we'll get to in a second, the position cutoff, which is just the bottom and the top to make sure that we only have clouds within that range. And it goes ahead and divides the position by a cloud's global scale, which just makes all the clouds bigger or smaller collectively at the same time. Then we have our large scale noise texture, which we go ahead and return if it equals zero, less than equals to zero. And if we don't do that, we get all sorts of errors, still kind of hunting down a way to, to remove this if statement. Anytime we have a shader, if we have if statements in it, it can be really bad for performance. So I'd like to remove that at some point, but haven't been able to find a way. Now down just below this, we get our height scale, which is just based off of the height weight gradient and using that height scale right here, which is just a, like I said, a variable, the zero at the bottom, one at the top. And the gradient just controls the shape of the clouds. And then we're gonna go ahead and get our base noise, we're going to add to it our detail noise, and then we're just going to multiply that by the height scale and subtract the large scale noise, which just gets us these big openings to make it kind of look more like storm fronts moving through and stuff like that. Now we do go ahead and smooth step between the cloud cutoff and the cloud cutoff plus the softness. This is going to help us clamp it within a range to kind of ease out or ease in our clouds for weather changes and things like that. And then we just return that noise and that's pretty much it. Now to actually see these in effect, if we go ahead and make that a little bit smaller, we can see all of our shader options here. I'm going to go ahead and use our testing material. So we've got a lot of different options here. So for example, if we set down the dither, you can see that we no longer have that noise, but now we have this kind of stair stepping process here. And while the effects can be very interesting, it doesn't really look very good. So if we add in that dither, it kind of gets a nice little noise to it. Now down just below that, we've got our sun direction, which is actually driven by a script right here. Now the script is based off the material, not off the mesh. So we'll 
have to drag in the material that we're currently using, and then we can just rotate our sun and all of the clouds will react to it. This also goes ahead and feeds in things like our sun's color as well as the energy. It also samples the ambient color from the world environment if the source is set to color and uses that for the clouds as well as checking what the fog is and using that for the fog. And we can do all sorts of things with that. Now if we go back to our material, we've got a couple other things. We've got our wind speed, which is self-explanatory. And if you were going to use this in your project, you'd probably want to break that out into a global variable. You've also got the clouds global scale. So if we set this down to something like 5,000, you'll notice that the clouds are much more noisy now. And if we set this up to something like 15,000, you'll notice they're much larger now. And this just kind of helps us keep everything within a good global scale. I found about 10,000 works pretty good. Now you've got your base noise scale, and this is the noise that makes up the bulk of the clouds. This is the baseline. Then we have our large scale noise, which just cuts out big swaths of the clouds in order to make them look more natural. And then we also have our detail noise. Now our detail noise, if you make this much smaller, you do result in a slightly more realistic look. And if you make it much larger, you end up with a much more poofy look that's more cartoony. I found something in between generally looks best. And then you've also got your controls for your strength of each of those different noises. So you got large scale noise, you can cut out more of it. The detail noise, if you go down below zero, you're actually subtracting from the clouds as opposed to adding to them. Now, besides that, you also have your cloud cutoff, which you can just scale up to make things much more overcast. That combined with toning down the large scale noise power is really gonna make the clouds much more stormy. I would suggest if you did wanna make them stormy, don't move the cloud cutoff all the way to zero, just move it close. And that way we'll have some little differentiation in the clouds here and it won't all just be perfectly gray. Now, just below that, you've also got cloud softness. Now this softens up pretty much everything, but be aware due to the way we're calculating the lighting, the lighting only occurs on the insides of the clouds. So you end up with this kind of halo effect if you make it too soft. So if that's what you're looking for, that's fine, but just be aware of it when you're messing with things. Besides that, we've also got dither speed, which I typically always set to a very high value, but if you wanted some sort of like retro quality, you could set it down to a lower speed or zero. You've also got your used fog as well as your different colors. These only go into effect when you're not setting them based off the cloud controller. Right now they do nothing. Then you've also got your cloud floor and ceiling, and that just clamps the clouds between a range, as well as the step close and step far. And this is used in the actual for loop, and we blend between these based off of how far through the iteration we are. So the farther away from the camera we get the less detail in the ray marching steps there are. This kind of results in an effect where you can set the detail up close to the camera to an extremely high detail and you can end up with clouds intersecting with geometry up close at a very high quality while still having clouds very very far away from the camera. You can see here the clouds are moving up around the cylinder fairly smoothly and the cylinder is about 200 and the cylinder is about 200 meters across and the closer we get the closer those bands get to each other and then farther away you've got much less quality but it's it's not as noticeable because it's so far away from the camera. Now, something to be aware of, if you set these two values too far apart, like say one and 200, you're going to see some very noticeable shimmering as you move through the world. And this is really not very visually appealing. So I tend to set them about an interval of 10. So if this is 10, that's 100. If this is 20, that's 200, that sort of thing. That tends to result in the least amount of shimmering. Though, as you can see, one to 100 isn't actually too bad. Now, besides that, we've also got our light lighting step distance as well as our lighting step count. When doing this one, be aware that the more lighting steps you do, probably the shorter distance it should be because it maps the shadows based off of the number of steps it takes. So if you don't set down the distance, you'll end up with not very much clouds on your environment. Although if you set this up to too high of a setting, you end up lagging and getting glitches like this. So we're just going to go ahead and reset that and we'll go ahead and reset that as well. Now, besides that, we've got a couple other settings. You've got your general cloud density and that just controls the density of the clouds that are being rendered. It doesn't make them take up more space. And then you've also got your max distance and your max fall off, and that's just the distance at which it fades. Now the gradient here is controlling the visual style of the clouds. So say we wanted to have a stronger cloud right in the center of the cloud deck and a very strong base, but a gap between the two. We go right here, you can now see we've designed that. Now there's a lot of options here. There's a lot of ways you can manipulate this and change it to whatever you like. And this is the more artistic side of the cloud system. I'm very pleased with it. I'm actually very pleased with it. This lets you do some very visually stunning looks. And below that, all we've got are our noise textures. Be aware that these are 3D textures. So as a result, if you make any changes, it will take just a little while to actually affect anything. So whenever you're making changes on these, make sure to duplicate it out to a new texture. That way you've got the previous one 
on and it still works. And then also make sure whenever you change it to wait a little while and give it a second update in the viewport. But that's pretty much it for the clouds. I'm pretty pleased with the visual quality, but like I said, I'm still experiencing a lot of visual errors, a lot of pixel error. I'm not really sure what to do about them. And some of them don't even show up on my GPU. They only show up on AMD GPUs. So if anyone wants to help with that, that'd be very nice. That being said, the GitHub repository is available down in the description. Thank you all for watching. If you want to use these in your project, go right on ahead. It's MIT licensed, so you can use it for whatever you want, charge whatever you want for your projects. I hope you all find this useful. The the next week we'll be back to our normal regularly scheduled programming. I hope you all have a wonderful week. We'll see you all back here next week for the next tutorial.